Hello and welcome, this is S Rank. Today I want to play some more Inscription Casey's mod. Today we are going to uh, hit up a pretty hard challenge here, so I want to stick with our insect pack and we're going to try to get 70 points. So um, I just don't know the best strategy to get this one. Let's, let's start off with selecting each of these and that gets us to 20. What I'm trying to avoid is tip scales and the difficult additions. Um, pricey pelts, you know, that's one thing, not a huge deal overall. Um, you know, we'll get plenty of cards, and if we're using insects, we can generate them as well. You know, clover, I don't really care about. No, the hook is a one time use thing, and a smaller backpack while it stinks. I think that. Um, having those things on kind of outweighs activating any of these three. So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. All right. Well, I don't think we'll have much to trade in here. Let's see. Our, I could add a mantis to keep our insect theme going on. Don't know if it's worth getting a ringworm since sometimes we just end up boosting them up at the fireplace areas. Um, so I think I'll do a mantis and a dire wolf pup and we'll go on from there. Oh hey wizard, how are you doing? Let's see, I think I'll put the dire wolf pups um, abilities on the mantis. There we go. I'm doing well. Just uh, starting up inscription for the day and uh, gonna see how it goes. I'm doing a pretty tough challenge, so not super confident, but you never know. It could work out. All right, I think our mantis is in a good spot. Now it's a mantis god, so I think that we will be doing pretty well here in a moment. Should be able to take out the bullfrog because of the uh, mighty leap that's blocking it. There we go. All right, nice. And we don't have any teeth, so going there doesn't really matter. I think getting in with our woodcarver makes the most uh, sense right now. Let's see, we'll just go for the left. Huh, golden pelt. Lucky, lucky. Hopefully we'll get some uh, insect related sigils. Hey. We have the insect head, so that'll work. Now we can just focus on the bodies. All right, two kingfishers coming up. Um, we could put a mantis down in front of one of the kingfishers. Now these are gonna move to block damage, so um, I guess putting it over here would make most sense so that they would presumably move over and help block my uh, mantis. So let's do that. Not that they'll block ultimately, but if they just move over, I think that'll make a difference. And we can put a skunk down to block a little bit of their damage while we're at it. Huh? They don't even bother moving. Interesting. I didn't know that they wouldn't even bother if they uh, are in that situation, so that's cool. Okay. This is going pretty nicely so far. Okay, let's see, we could bust something up, do a sigil swap. Um, I'd like to buff up the mantis a little bit. I guess we'll go with that way. Oh, another insect pick. Oh, thank you. 
it's uh, been a long journey, but you know, getting there day by day, it's getting more and more difficult, it feels like, but um, I think it's worth it. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna have this uh, nice mantis when it uh, gets to its higher form. Hopefully I'll get a fungus event and then combine the two mantises I have now. Ooh, a beehive. That'd be nice to get us some bees started. Um, that'll help get us a ant queen pretty quickly, so let's go for it. Nice. Good. Now we should be able to get our ant queen on the board. And we can get our bee too, which we'll probably go ahead and get it on there so that we can... Actually, let's do our worker ant, and that'll definitely be enough strength to uh, pass the test here and get some excess teeth. Good. Let's practice the pelts on. It'll take a lot of teeth to get anything unlocked. Alright, let's see. I guess bone might be a good idea. Awesome. The Romantis generating bone for us, that'll be um, viable, and maybe getting something like a turkey vulture or whatever would be a good idea too. Ah, a trinket bear. Um, that would be nice since I'm only going to have two items at once. I don't know how much stinky will matter, so let's get trinket bear. I don't want to start using items. Alright. Oh, uh, Corpse Eater. Having an auto deploy is pretty nice too. Let's stick with item though. Maybe that'll help overcome um, only having two items at a time. Alright, the dreaded angler. We'll try to move through this one quickly. Okay, let's see. Could get a flying ant and a skunk down right away. So, let's see. Pull a tooth and we can also get a possum pretty quickly. Um, let's see. Oh, the weather? Um, it's been fair today. A little bit hot on and off, but not too bad. Let's see. How about... We play our flying ant. Okay, that gets us some bone, and we can also get our skunk on the board, and that'll generate enough bone to also get our possum into play. Excellent. Alright, let's have them pull the smoke over. Okay, excellent. We should be able to uh, break through on this next turn, I believe. Let's see, unfortunately he's going to pull something over, so what do we want to have happen here? Um, could play our Ant Queen, get us another item before the enemy comes. Um, however, I guess playing a squirrel to keep what we have on the board may be a wiser move. Oh, nice. Yeah, the weather can uh, change at a moment's notice. You never know. Let's see... Now, our possum is going to be in danger. Our flying ant won't be a problem. Um, hitting these bait buckets is going to be a big problem, though. And I have no way to pull any of this attack back, unfortunately. Um, and all of them being activated, we'll be able to take something else out. 
So I'm tempted to just sacrifice what I have here um, if I can. And unfortunately, I can't get rid of everything, really. So the Mantis wouldn't grow stronger, but we would just immediately lose it. Um, so that's no good either. Uh, I could put it over here and strike the same spot for one turn and maybe get, well, even the Ant Queen on the board won't matter. I think we may end up losing this right away because we just don't have items to uh, support it or cards. Um, now we would get some items getting these cards on the board and maybe those would make the difference. So let's take the bones and see what we can generate um, points wise. So I think keeping our max damage going as much as we can will activate this guy and this one will be there. So Black Goat is it? I don't think it's really going to help us. I mean, it could get the Ant Queen on the board. I wish that we could. Um, sacrifice the cards just for bone but not actually activate them that would be an ideal situation here um, so let's do that and now we have card cutting which is excellent um, and we could card cut this one as to not activate it I think now we may be safe from activation until this turn but by that time we'll have so much power on the board, I don't think it'll matter. Okay, I guess technically we didn't even have to use it, um, but that was good. Okay. Excellent. That was quite exciting. Ooh, a millworm, a flying ant, and a river otter. If we could boost up the millworm, that would be pretty fun. It does take two bone to you. Um, having another flying ant so we'd have another chance at generating stuff. I think I'll go with the millworm. That'll add some diversity to our deck. Because um, we'll still get items for any insect we play. Alright. Well, I do have one pelt to trade in. I don't know if it's quite worth it at this moment, though. Um, I think I'd rather duplicate my mantis. So let's go over that way. Ooh, a random card. We'll take it for the adventure. Might not be a perfect strategy, but we'll take it for fun. All right, let's, uh, I think let's go ahead and duplicate our interesting mantis here. Oh yeah, random card's cool. All right, looks like a uh, perfect copy. I think I'll merge one of the uh, mantises with the extra sigils I have onto another, the plain one that I have, so that way I can have, um, you know, two of them enjoying that one with a little bit more power than the other, and that would be pretty spectacular. Okay, and I think that, that will be it. So that'll get us four on the board, and that'll do just fine. Our Mantis God will come into play and should win us the next turn since it will have striking in three directions. Oh, nice. We can play our Millworm, and uh, yeah, that'll be it. We'll just be there for fun. Oh. It's calculate a little bit. I forgot that the raven would be moving around. Oh, and there's our worker ant. So, let's see, we have two items on the board already. Um, let's get rid of the bones just in case we generate something extra nice here. Alright, squirrel. That's acceptable. Probably better than having the bones. Oh no, I'm sorry you got hurt. That, uh, Sounds like it could have been pretty painful. Let's see, a sigil swap or heading over here for some trade-ins. Um, I don't see an immediate 
good need to do a sigil swap. So let's go by here for a, tra a trade-in and maybe we'll be able to get something. Okay. So we can't afford a golden pelt yet, but we can't afford a wolf pelt. So let's just go with it. Take what we have. All right. Bees in the thin. Those are always nice. Um, I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of capacity to generate it, though. So I want to go with this head instead, and we'll stick with our item bearing, but we'll have the ability to swap out species just in case we end up diversifying and seeing a need to do so. All right, well, we have another strong mantis, so I think that that's going to be um, the route for this one. It should get us just about to a winning position right away. Um, I don't see any reason to delay playing it. Um, I could use a squirrel and put it in front of, let's say, our porcupine just to... Uh, see what we generate here in a moment. Maybe we'll get an even better item. Okay, a frozen possum. That's pretty good. Okay, and I guess slight miscalculation. We're going to lose our mantis god. Um, so let's draw from here. And um, yeah, I guess we'll need to sacrifice our skunk here to uh, put something maybe in line over here and get enough damage to uh, make it out. Actually, we're not going to make make it out either way now that I think about it. Um, how can we overcome this situation? Do to do. Well, we can strike this ma this uh, coyote and uh, go from there. So let's do let's do that. Okay. And that'll clear up that space and Cody will move back. And I guess we can play our frozen possum in front of it. And a wolf pelt over here. And uh, yeah, keep going. All right, and a rabbit pelt. Wow, we may actually have to lose this one at the current uh, rate. It's not looking too good for the home team. All right, corpse maggots, and it does generate an item, so let's see if we get lucky here. Um, a turn skipper, so Corpse Maggots will take out this coyote, and this possum will take out this coyote, I believe. And, uh, yeah, we may be okay. Oh, that coyote didn't move over. Oh, it's only because it's Guardian. Right, okay. Golden Pelt. We can block the uh, Porcupine for a little bit with that. Okay, Possum's going to take out the Coyote. And an Ant Queen. Okay. Um, let's see. If we had them skip their turn, I think we would win. Just thinking about this one, it's a tricky one. Okay, I think I'm going to let this turn go. All right, now the possum and the corpse maggots will take over on the damage side of things. So let's keep going. Yep, I figured that might happen, but we're gonna let it play out just in case we can get excess damage somehow. Uh, let's see, what else do we get? Flying ant, making a new item. Um, 
Ant Queen could get on the board, but she's not going to have enough power. These guys are going to keep going, and it's a deadlock, unfortunately. Um, let's see. If I put a Flying Ant on the Porcupines, it's going to take it out. I could get um, that one on there with using the Black Goat up or sacrificing the Possum and the Squirrel. So let's do that. Um, and then we can get our worker ant or flying ant on board next. A little bit of a roundabout way to do it all, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Here we go. Now we have enough strength to take out the porcupine. Okay. And what do we get? A millworm. Alright, so I can't sacrifice anything for it, but I can put a flying ant down, and that'll get us 9 damage in the attack, which would be, I think, 4 or 5 teeth extra. Yep. Perfect. That'll be good since we have pricey belts turned on. Alright, I think I'm happy with my combination for the uh, totem. I'm looking to see if there's any way I want to rearrange these guys, but other than maybe putting Stinky on the Mantis that I want to combine, I don't know if um, I see much of a good use of anything else here. Um, well, that's hard. I don't think I have anything I want to sacrifice just for getting bone either. Millworm on the skunk perhaps would be nice because that would be a step up in its um, power. Hmm. Yeah, I could get Stinky put on this Mantis and then when they get combined have a stinky mantis god. Um, I think I'll do that. A little bit of a weird way to do it, but let's see what we draw here. Okay, another millworm. So that's not too exciting. All right, let's get us a uh, mantis that uh, has stinky on it. Hopefully we'll have this a fungus event where we can combine our uh, two different mantises up. Oh, I just realized there's a mantis or a fungus event in that other route. So unfortunately I'm going to miss it on this boss run. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll be there on the next. Wolf cub and possum. Okay, and we do have stinky so we can neutralize this possum. That's perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I kind of hate to use these items, um, so let's just keep what we have, I suppose. All right. Oh, a rabbit pelt. Exciting. And a wolf pelt. Very cool. Here we go. This has worked out pretty well so far. Okay, an ant queen. I think we'll take it. All right, pack rat card. Excellent. Maybe I'll uh, sacrifice it to on something else, and that way I'll have another venue of uh, generating cards. So this one generates might, so I think putting it on one of the millworms makes a lot of sense. Now it can attack, and its abilities can be added on to something else for a plus one and plus two boost. That would be pretty amazing for some of our weaker cards. 
All right, boss number two, the prospector. Oh, good. We drew both of our mantises. Um, so we could put one here. We're going to lose it to the coyote, though, since they have sharp quills turned on. Um, that's never fun. We could put our ant queen down instead and be using the black goat. And in fact, I think I will go that route because we'll generate an autumn as well. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, a worker ant, and we could put another card down, um, go that route, and um, let's see, that would be four damage. If we skipped a turn, we would go ahead and go to the next phase, so I'm going to do it um, so that way we can just lose our two ant cards instead of um, having to worry about anything else getting lost. So, a little bit unusual, maybe a little bit unnecessary, but I think I'd rather do it this way than to have, uh, you know, everything else just kind of gone. Oh wow, you lose the ability to get to the pack mule with that. I had no idea. That's uh, pretty bad. Bad situation. <laughs> um, I guess let's get our mantis down and um, see what we can do here. Oof. Scary. Okay. Alright. And we can get another mantis down. I think that we will be just fine from here on. We should win. Good. Okay, I think that, that worked out pretty well. I kind of wish I didn't resort to using the um, hourglass item, but you know, it won the game pretty smoothly because I did, so we'll take it. Ooh, fecundity. Um, yeah, that's very tempting. Let's see. I think I don't already have a card with um, the uh, corpse eater on it, so that's tempting to get to deploy something that's harder to get out on the uh, map so it's always hard to pick between that and field mice because having a fecundity would be really nice for if we get a mega strong mantis combo going on um i guess let's do we've already put sigils on all of our mantises too so let's do the corpse maggots Maybe putting that on our uh, ant queen would be pretty nice. Oh, I think I see a fungi event up there near the top. Nope, it was a sacrifice event. Okay. Two of kin. That sounds like a uh, easy one to pick. Alright, we got lucky. Ah, oh, corpse maggots with... Uh, Dam Builder and Bifurcated Strike. Um, that's sounding like an easy win to me. We'll do it. Okay. I don't see a fungal event. Um, we don't have enough teeth to really go trade in either. I uh, could put the sigil for this one on something else. Um, or perhaps save it up the pack rats sigil being where it's at i think it's fine having an auto deploy ant queen in her hand could be pretty nice i think save us some trouble um i think i'd like to go that route maybe do the cave event as well so let's do auto deploying Ant Queen, I think. Or even a pack rat. Either one of these sound pretty good, but Ant Queen will also generate us another card in our hand, too. So that would be nice. Okay. We continue forward. Oh, 
Okay. Turkey vulture and a mole. Got to take out a turkey vulture pretty quickly. Um, boulder. Let's see. I can't remember if it actually does block airborne. Touch of death and stinky. I don't think it blocks airborne though, unfortunately. Um, and we could get possum on the board. It would die in one turn against our other guy. So let's get the bones out as well. And we can play it. Um, and it'll at least do some damage against our turkey vulture when the time is right. And the flying ant could help us generate something on the board. So let's just go ahead and um, put it down so we can get some sort of thing. Okay. Black goat. Um, that's nice. Unfortunately, we won't be able to really use it until the next turn, but I think we'll go ahead and get it in our hand because chances are good that we will want to use it. Okay. I think that it'll be time to put our Ant Queen down. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's just go for it. Okay, what item did we get? A worker ant, and I think we'll get another item too. Oh, an airborne one. Now the mole um, is burrower, so it won't be able to go past, but if I wave the fan, um, that would get us two more damage, so I think that I will wave it. Actually, maybe three more, because otherwise the mole would maybe strike it. And our possum got to survive another round too, which is important. All right. So let's go over here and we can get, let's see, an elk fawn is incoming, but the mole is going to move over to it. And if I don't play the other card right away, it should stay over there and block it. And Ant Queen could hit it again, but I think that getting the worker ant on the board so we can have another item makes a lot of sense too. I'm determined to uh, get the win here. I think we may have with our flying ants aerial ability. Yep. Okay. That was tough. Still don't really have enough teeth to trade in. At least not worth making it trip. Um, but a fur trader would be handy. Um, I might turn in the random card for the sacrifice pile. Or I could get a second pack rat. That's nice too. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go to the right. Maybe we'll sacrifice the random card. Alright, three sigils sounds like a pretty decent bet. There's two, there's three and four, there's five, six, and seven. Great. Oh, a mantis that makes rabbits and grows up as well. And a dire wolf that's unkillable. That's pretty nice. And it's airborne. Okay, well that's nice and strange. Um, an elk fawn, it's corpse eater, bifurcated strike. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds great. So I don't see a whole lot of appeal to this mantis. I mean, we've already kind of got, you know, that going on somewhat with our other cards. That would be our fourth one though. Um, so we could have a real mantis invasion here. Um, maybe we'll do it just for the fun of it kind of like the dire wolf a little bit better but hey there's this a fungus event perfect okay let's sacrifice our random card nice wow pretty good draw um, starting off with these guys, not so nice. Um, <laughs> so we could generate a rabbit right away and that could lead into us putting down a mealworm and, um, actually having enough to get a ant queen on the board, but it'll auto deploy as it is. So if I put the mantis in the middle here, um, I mean, the wolf cub would come out and take it down, 
So I think I want to put it over to the side instead. And that way, actually I'll play it. I think I'll play it here because it should be able to strike the raven before it dies and take out a little bit of damage on the boulder. So let's see what item we get out of this too. Okay, we got us a rabbit that will grow up into something stronger. And we do have a card cutter now. And I could put the uh, mealworm down and thus get the ant queen by sacrificing the rabbit as well. And we'll get another item. So, yeah, let's go for that. Oh, I should have used one of those items. And I should have used another one, so I just wasted two potential items there. <laughs> um, that's alright. Let's just uh, let it try it out. Okay, Mantis God is unfortunately going to die on the Raven Egg, but um, that's okay. We're going to put some extra firepower in this lane with the wolf cub and I may go ahead and let's see if I wave the fan I think I should win anyway so let's just go ahead and wave it there we go excellent this two items isn't as hard as I thought it was going to be it's actually working out kind of nicely Mmm, we could get a turkey vulture now. But a dire wolf um, sounds kind of better, actually. We don't have a beehive right now. Um, and we don't have anything with bees within, I think. So it's kind of tempting to keep it for uh, potentially use there. But I think I'll go with the dire wolf so that I have at least one card that has three on it. Now if I go this way, I can either do a duplication or a fungi event, and I don't think I need a power up, so I want to go this way, um, and we'll see if maybe we can do a couple of combinations here. Alright, uh, let's see. This sounds like a pretty fantastic mantis combination. Um, it'd be three and two, so that's not bad. and. Generate bone along with fledgling, so it'll come stronger and generate a rabbit. And we could do millworms, that would be quite powerful. Um, yeah, let's go with. Let's see. Thinking that maybe the millworm might be the wisest decision because. It can contribute for a while and then be sacrificed um, for a one in four stat boost by, you know, any card. Um, so that's pretty nice. And the mantis are one blood each, and they're gonna grow up anyways. So yeah, I think we'll do millworm. Okay. Oh, there's two more um, fungal events up along the way, too. Kind of need our ant queen so that we can continue generating ants as well, so that'd be kind of rough without them. Oh, another sharp quills. I think that they are definitely setting that up um, to get me on purpose. So, I'm wondering if I should instead park my mantis in front of where the rabbit is about to come down. In fact, I think I probably will do that. Okay. And let's do... Um, we could do a card cut, but I don't think it's going to matter because we're going to hit that Mantis anyways. Um, we could skip a turn, but let's just wait and see how this goes. We'll give it a turn to kind of play out just a little bit. Alright, Mantis God is going to get lost on one of these two cards, unfortunately. So I'm tempted to put down the Ant Queen, um, but she's not going to have enough power to really matter, so let's see what's in this. Alright, a Stinky Mantis, um, which is cool and all, but we got to kind of get rid of something here. Um, Mantis God is going to be lost. 
anyways. Um, so let's see. I think I'll cut the wild bull. And then we will play out our other Mantis card. So we can get it started on growing since we're going to lose that other one. So we'll go ahead and pull a tooth as well. Okay. And that'll be it. Okay. And the Ant Queen auto deployed. Perfect. I should have been paying attention to that. Should have seen that coming, but I kind of glossed over that that was about to happen. All is well, though. Okay. Ooh, that has a lot of changes in one turn. So let's see. Um, we'll draw from here, I guess. And we get a set of Mantis. And it is going to have to contend with some tricky situations here. Let's do, I guess, this guy. And... Um, Ring the bell. Okay. And if we get our other mantis down, we can play like so. And yeah, so let's see. A worker ant will put one damage on the board. The mantis will put enough to complete it. There we go. Got it. I just had to kind of walk myself through that one and convince myself it was going to happen. <laughs> Oops. I accidentally slapped my keyboard. Um, let's see. Now, bone-consuming cards. I think we may have enough, so let's go with the three blood instead. All right. Now, two fungus events. So we could combine up... Um, another round of mantises and we also have the ant queens let's see so ant queens mantises and that's it as far as our possible combinations I'm not sure it would show us both of them so what kind of mantises could we get we've got a two and one a one and one a two and one and a one and one so maybe a two and two um, and duplicating cards this late in the game, I'm not sure there's much worth it. Um, yeah. I think I would just about rather combine my mantises, so let's try seeing what happens when we do two of these in a row. I'm not even sure it's going to give us options, but we'll see. Haha, <laughs> look how the sigil went up to the top of the title, that's funny. Alright, worst case scenario, it'll make us uh, combine our ants, but ant queens. Okay, it didn't. So, let's see. I think this will be a really nice, strong one. So it'll be like four and three, and then it'll grow into something even stronger. Might be the most sigils I've ever had on one card. That'll be five. That's awesome. Okay, chances of getting a high-powered Mantis are pretty high right now, too. So let's see what we get. Ah, Corpse Maggots with Bifurcade Strike. Lovely. Um, so they do have Dam Builder, though, too. And it would attack anything off to the side. So we could put down Frozen Possum to deflect some of the energy to start and flying ant to take out our leaping trap situation. Um, I actually have enough bones I can put down the corpse maggots right away. Um, so that's a nice unusual situation. And let's see, they have bifurcated strike and corpse eater as well. Um, they don't have any stats to speak of, so if I did this, it's not going to matter because they have 
um, leaping attack anyways. So, uh, it's looking like I should just let it play on, but I might need to work on opening up that pathway, the leaping trap. So let's go ahead and do that while we're at it. Hopefully we'll get enough pelts to avoid um, anything too crazy from happening here. Okay, uh, the corpse maggots now doesn't have any power to uh, do anything. So that kind of leaves us with like pulling the possum or something else out on the board. Um, the ant queen, I don't think we'll be able to take anything else out either due to the stinky. So that's really rough getting stinky on all these creatures um, they may have found my Achilles hill here sure wish I had skip a turn I guess playing frozen possum may be our best choice here for the moment oof okay let's do another draw from here I guess a golden pelt so we could start pelting things down um, for a minute while we're trying to collect ourselves and figure out what we're gonna do with all these stinkies um, Wow yeah I think I'm just gonna have to do something like that like it's not gonna buy me a ton of time but I don't see a much better alternative for the moment okay all right dire wolf can actually do something about it so we'd have to get some blood on the board that would last however the uh, ant queen could be part of that um, once our lanes are cleared out a little bit so let's see this is all I'm going to just come down to timing really so still don't have enough yet as soon as that frozen possums unfrozen I think we would have a chance but, I mean we're gonna lose a dire wolf over this because there's gonna be a trap um, and it's gonna hurt us so well the ant queen would last long enough too that we could get a worker ant in the next turn maybe that's how I should be looking at this actually we could lose the worker ant on that column so yeah I should have thought of that sooner let's go for it and we'll get an item out of this too that maybe can make a difference a boulder okay um, not going to help me in this particular situation, I don't think, but it's at least encouraging to see because I can use it to block the uh, other lanes when the time is right. Okay, um, so let's get, I guess, boulder down over here and we will put down our worker ant. Now we have enough power to overcome these guys, and we'll pull a tooth, and it's not going to matter using our fan, so we'll just leave it for now. Alright, and uh, yeah, now we have enough to get out Dire Wolf, um, so we could let this worker ant hit there, and in the next the ant queen would turn this one into a trap um, and then we could sacrifice and get the bullfrog taken out with our dire wolf I think in our next turn so let's wait and see oh I think I miscounted where things were at there so I think we're back to having kind of a dire situation now <laughs> unfortunately um, Let's see, so we need to block as much damage as we can, I guess. Unfortunately, we're just going to get in some trouble though, because we need three cards to get our dire wolf going. Oh boy, I really uh, made a bad move there. Um, how about 
little block in the bullfrog lane. We're gonna get two damage though. Where's that put us at? Pretty low. Huh. Okay. Let's just see. All right. I think this is the way. All right, pack rat. That's enough to take out that lane at least, and we may be okay. All right, so scissor time. Um, if we can cut out a card, what would we want to do? I guess cutting out the adder would buy us some time. Um, or perhaps even the bullfrog would make some sense. Kind of need to get some more pelt, so that's going to be a problem. So the pack rat will take out the adder and then just kind of be alone there. So I'm kind of saying maybe I should save the scissors. Um, yeah, we're going to break even though that strange frog. All right. To save the scissors, I guess. Okay. Now we need to cut a card in order to make a profit on our damage. So let's cut the bullfrog. He could just end up playing a card, but I'm thinking he's he's out now. All right. Finally, nice situation. So got a super strong mantis that's going to evolve and generate rabbits and the whole nine yards. Um, so let's put it out of the path of being struck. And uh, yeah, we should be looking like we're in a pretty good situation now. And <laughs> look at this rabbit with all these crazy sigils on it. That's hilarious. We've got Bone Digger, Fledgling, Trinket Bearer, and Stinky. Um, so yeah, why not go ahead and we'll do our fan wave here and continue on. That way we'll use up that item that we don't really need. All right, Mantis God is gonna, I think, carry us into the next turn pretty nicely. Okay, just about got us all the way there. And, uh, yeah, let's keep saving up so that we have enough to get one of these, like, really powerful guys on the board. I think, technically, I have only one pelt to trade. I think it'll give me one card, so looks like we got to choose wisely here. Alright, we have one pelt. So... The Mantis God can get us 4 damage right away. Um, Mud Turtle could be a little bit of a threat. The Pack Rat could get us some good damage in that one. This Grizzly with Bifurcated Strike sounds like a big problem in this. So will the Great White, because um, we kind of can't get rid of it once it comes down. Uh, let's see. On oh, a turkey vulture with like a double strike ability too. Oh man, all these cards should just be banned. Um, I think I'm gonna go with I guess the turkey vulture, and I have more than enough bones. I should be able to play it somewhere. So. If I could get it on the board and something else, maybe I stand a chance to win here. Um, I don't think that the moose buck is anything particularly powerful. This turkey vulture being airborne too should be pretty nice. Um, so maybe playing it and it alone could get us. I think. I think we have enough here to to pull it off. I'm just kind of double checking our situation, but don't think that we can lose now. And we'll play 
Um, let's see. So the pack rat will take out the bat. Turkey vulture is going to get plus four. And the mantis god is going to eliminate the sky and the raven. And um, yeah, just to be safe, we could have them skip turn, but I really want to save that for our final fight. So um, let's put in our rabbit just for fun. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good now. Okay. So we're just off by one, but I think it we're going to be okay. Okay, our rabbit's going to come in there and rough up that moose buck. And I want to get the dire wolf on the board too. And I think that we have enough here to uh, get just about everything going. Um, moose buck will be a little bit of a problem. Um, but the dire wolf could take out the grizzly and do some more damage. Um, but we could have him skip his turn too, and maybe that will be enough to uh, get us to where we need to be. Okay, let's see. I don't know if keeping our elder rabbit is the wisest move, but I could cut a card. I think that might be the best choice overall and we'll get our dire wolf on the board by going here and it'll take out the moose buck when it comes over to uh, protect that and then moose buck won't be able to kill the dire wolf it'll get killed on the next turn I believe there we go okay and a mantis. Excellent. I think that we have all the firepower we need now. This has been an intense fight. Okay. I got so close in that one turn where I had only one damage left to do and I couldn't do it. I was uh, definitely in shock. It was like, I thought I had it. <laughs> okay. Well, another mantis. We could keep adding them in, um, but I think we'll go with the Black Goat instead since we have a couple of more powerful cards that could really use it. That'll make up for only being able to carry uh, two cards at a time, or two items at a time, rather. All right, so we have a Wolf Pelt, Golden Pelt, and a Rabbit Pelt, so I think that trading in our pelts may be our best bet here. Um, I don't see a need to go to the Woodcarver. Things seem to be working pretty nicely. Um, I don't see sacrificing our sigils making any sense. We definitely don't need more items to only get us a pack rat. So we'll go this route. Okay. A cat that could get sacrificed over and over. Um, that would be nice. It could be somewhat rare, but we could deploy, you know, several items in our fleet using it until it dies. Um, a wolf could be nice, and a mantis. Um, I guess let's go with the cat. Maybe getting it on the board first thing could give us a good chance of winning. All right, a beaver that has ant spawner. Um, that sounds pretty lovely. An adder that has it as well. But the beaver putting down its dam with ant spawner would make me think the dams would spawn two ants, so it could get like three ants out of that. So, I mean, I think that's hard to beat. <laughs> All right. And a golden pelt, um, we could get several things. A strange larva or the amalgam. I'm going to go with the amalgam because you know they're going to send them after us here in this next fight. All right. Deep breath. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. All right, worst things here, I think, is when the prospector comes out, so we'll try to get skip turn with that as soon as we can. 
Might use skip turn on my very first turn, actually. Oh, Mantis God is incoming as well. Um, so, yeah, what do we got here? I have an Ant Queen that can help us generate some stuff. And a Mealworm that can significantly boost the power of somebody. We could get that down almost right away, actually. Yeah, we could, because we could play Ant Queen and uh, generate an item. So let's do turn skip and we will get the ant queen down well yeah and then millworm and then our mantis okay so let's do it not too worried about placing it here we'll just put it wherever okay and now we have scissors so let's cut up our mole man so we don't have to worry about it and We'll play Millworm, and we'll go ahead and take those bones, thank you, and um, we will play our Mantis God by sacrificing our, our Millworm, putting it right in the middle, and that'll get us um, 15 damage when it gets up to Mantis God form, and um, we'll go ahead and take our Squirrel and our Frozen Possum, and we can get a... Um, Worker ant on the board, and we'll take our boulder, and we'll get our rabbit on the board, and we'll save that for when we need it. I don't think it we're going to need it, but it'll be there. Wow, that is probably one of the most overpowered plays I've had against uh, this guy in a long time. Like, look, our mantis god is still going to get us the next phase, like, right away. <laughs> That's just uh, kind of ridiculous. Wow. In my first turn, I think I want to complete without having to lay down any more cards. I don't think that's ever happened. Um, the moon might take out something, but I at least got all the way to the moon without having to lay down another card, so I, I consider that an achievement. This is just a completely crazy setup. I haven't really seen anything like it in uh, my playthroughs, at least. Wow, two turns against the moon. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Moose Buck. So we could play it, but overall we would lose um, power on the board. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll just leave what we have here. This was a super powerful squad and I have a huge pile of bones. And, uh, wow. Meshi did not stand a chance there. Four bosses defeated, 138 cards drawn, 20 uh, scale damage in one turn, squirrels harmed, 39, sacrifices made, 56, and 15 misplays. Wow, what an intense match. Entry number seven. Some nights I'm odd, some nights I dig. I dig deeper into this log file and find things I sometimes wish I hadn't. This isn't just some disc Kaminsky used to vent his workplace frustrations. This is some real shit. Every once in a while, I get some context from the woodcarver and it's chilling. This could all be bunk, or there could be a doomsday machine under Berlin, armed by a code hidden on a pack of cards. In other news, I just finished implementing the boss totems challenge. New cards unlocked. Raccoon. While Raccoon is on the board, opposing creatures also provide bones when perishing. Oh, interesting. The Lemurgeier? I'm not sure how to say that. The power of the Lemurgeier is equal to half of the bones of the owner. Also, Lemurgeier will strike an opponent directly, even if there is a creature opposing it. Interesting. Um, so it's airborne and... Bones are what give it strength. It takes three blood. So that can be wildly overpowered quickly, it sounds like. A new starter deck with a raccoon. Um, I think that's Cody and a direwolf. Yep. Okay. That might be fun to try. Okay. Well, we had a good success. So I think that I'll um, 
go ahead and call it a stream from there and say thanks for watching. This has been STR Inc. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at STR Inc. And I'll have a replay up on YouTube soon. Thanks and have a good day.